What we should probably do is go and split up investment banking from banking, have banks be deposit takers, have banks make commercial loans and, and uh, real estate loans, have banks do something that's not going to risk the taxpayer dollars, that's not going to be too big to fail. Some pretty remarkable words from Sandy Weil, the man who put together the modern banking system as we know it, came out today on CNBC and said, let's tear it all back apart. Welcome to Me Street, everyone. I'm Dennis Berman of The Wall Street Journal. Sandy Weil's remarks are echoing around this uh, newsroom today. And David uh, Riley, who writes the Hurt on the Street column and covers banks, is here to talk to us it's about those remarks. It's a pretty remarkable statement coming from Sandy It almost Weil. seemed as if he were like prepping for it. If you look at his body language. I mean, although some people would say, you know, what took him so long? <laughs> I mean, you saw John Reed came out and sort of said the same thing about two, three John years ago. John Reed, of course, ago. is his one-time partner in crime right. putting together the exactly. modern city group. But how did you react to that, David, when you read the Well, well I think it, in, in one way, I mean, there's a couple of things. I think it's, it's a good admission from a, a system standpoint, to hear someone like him say, you know, actually, yeah, come to the conclusion, why do we have the, the deposits and ultimately the taxpayers backing capital markets operations? As you look at that, you're like, it doesn't make sense. Why is that? Um, from a practical standpoint, is this going to change anything in the next six months? Per no. Perhaps not. But in my conversations with people on the street, at some pretty high levels, they all seem to be acknowledging this fact. Oh, I, I think where where this will have an impact is you've already have you have doubts out there, and people are saying, you know, does this make sense? You know, do we with J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, does the structure make sense? This is really going to prompt a lot more soul searching. I think both on the board level, the executive level, and importantly with shareholders. Can we talk about Sandy Weil for a second? Mm -hmm. Because he almost expressed himself today as if he were being a a magnanimous philosopher. We need to do it for the uh, good of the country, for the innovation of the country, for the young people who want to work on Wall Street. Does that ring true to you? Because I it don't know. It's, it's easy for him to say to that me. now when he's, you know, his bonus isn't at stake. But when it was his, you know, hey, I want to push this through because it's going to make me even richer. And let's not forget yeah. who who signed that legislation. It was it was Bill Clinton right. in Congress at the time, yeah. who was Treasury Secretary at the time. It was Larry Summers, who we saw right. obviously in the last financial crisis. But it just rang to me, David, as I can't believe you're you're actually saying that. It might be the the intellectually correct thing to say, but. Um, I'm surprised he didn't add. Well, I'm not surprised, but isn't it, isn't it noteworthy that he did not add, I got it wrong. My philosophy right. for what this was to be was wrong. He didn't go that far. Right. And which I guess in some ways maybe it's you know not surprising for someone to have such a change of heart. They, they have to go in steps. But it, even the, the, the amount he did go, I think, is pretty striking. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about what a breakup looks like. I think you're writing a Heard on the Street column about this. What is probably most interesting is that regulators won't do it. It's going to be the market that's that's doing it. Ultimately, the market is what because, like I was saying, the reason that it's not you know there's not going to be a practical impact is because this isn't even regulators who do this. This would have to be an act of Congress, and Congress sort of went down this a little bit during the Dodd Frank debate, and then said, no, we're not going to go down that. So, is there going to be any appetite in Congress or time before presidential and congressional elections to do something like this? No. Nope. No. Do you think even the first half of next year? Probably not. So. Could this longer term really bring this back? Sure. But I think the more immediate pressure is going to come from the market, where when you look at the valuations of these the, the biggest banks, they're not very good, especially not in relation right, to smaller peers. Let's just go through peers. real quickly. Bank of America has got a book tangible book value of Price under tangible one, book right? value of about 50%. 50%. Uh, yeah. Goldman, Morgan Stanley. Uh, Morgan Stanley is about 50%. Goldman's about right. 75 percent So the market's saying, basically saying the businesses that operate on top of these assets are worth less than the assets themselves. Right. They're, they're saying they can't generate the returns they need to going forward, or the assets are overstated, the liability is understated. They're basically saying th this doesn't make sense, this right. structure. Do something about okay, it. Okay, so maybe the market will take care of it. But let's get back maybe to the philosophical question of why these big banks haven't worked. It is not inconceivable to make the leap of logic that uh, to put an investment bank on top of a retail brokerage that also sells you, say, insurance or sells you other banking products. F theoretically, it's not 
the craziest idea. No, it makes a, in some ways it makes a lot of sense. And of course, you know, one of the arguments you'll hear from someone like Jamie Dimon is, hey, look, we're out there serving big multinational clients who need us to be able to do a variety of tasks in a number of countries at scale. And there, there's a certain truth to that argument. And, and he would also argue, as he has in the past, that you know other countries aren't, so, Germany isn't going to suddenly say, oh, well, let's split Deutsche Bank into a couple of right. pieces. And then the it Chinese does become a competitiveness question. Banks. It becomes a competitive question. Although, longer term, you have to wonder, is will bank, you, if you have more focused banks that are better regulated and smaller, can they actually compete better? Right. I don't think, any, for all the talk about, oh, the competition from Europe, I don't hear a lot of people saying right now, oh, well, let's go to the European banks. Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, for sure. their valuations are even worse. Okay, David, I give basically 18 months to two years till we see a significant change in the banking landscape. But whether it's Morgan Stanley goes private or gets split up, Goldman Sachs goes private or maybe even spits out its banking arm. Um, what's, we got to run here. But, I, but what's I would your prediction? agree with you on uh, if you don't see a subs you know significant change in the global economy, things really pick up and activity pick up on Wall Street. I think there is going to have to be some sort of change. Shareholders are just going to say this isn't working. You've got to do something about it.